What up and welcome back to another Wake and Bake episode here with us on the We Don't Smoke the Same podcast. How's everybody doing? Um, thank you so much for joining us once again and thank you for being patient. Joining me across from me is not my toxic co-host. It is my positive co-host, Rock Sampson. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best costume I've ever bought. Are you a costume guy? I am. Yeah. Yeah. I have like a, a couple of cradle bins, like just of costumes. Like, I mean, I buy some quality costumes. Well, then again, costumes have come a long way. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the fun costumes and all that stuff. But, um, I really, also, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Also joining us, uh, Ray's running the boards as usual. The one and only Ray. Uh, what's up, Morning Shop Films? Uh, holding it out. Thank you once again. And well, let's give a big round of applause for our special guest, the one and only Holly Weird is in the house. Yeah. Now, I don't want to just call you by your Instagram name. So what's your what's your first name? Uh, first name is Tammy. Last name is Merhab Chavez. All right. So I just call you Tammy. Yeah. Thank you for thank you. Thank you Do for the joining whole us, Tammy. Tammy Chavez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us. And, um, you know, you you're, this, you this couldn't have joined us at, like, a more perfect time. I was, um, it's like the last spurts before Halloween. I feel like Halloween should be longer. I agree. Like, Halloween should be, like, a week. A of, a, of an eye, yeah. And then Christmas takes forever to fucking get over. Well, we're already in Christmas territory. I went to Home Depot last night. They already have all the Christmas trees out. There's no remnants of Halloween anywhere. That's so dumb. It is really dumb. I wanted there's, to see the manager. There, there, there's already snow on top of the Disneyland castle. That's fucking no. dumb. Yeah. I'm actually petitioning to have Halloween become a week-long event like Hanukkah and call it Hallowanica. How, how, <laughs> how long is Hanukkah? Uh, eight days. Damn, both of you guys are Jewish? No, <laughs> <laughs> no but um, that's... Uh, Damn, eight days? That's kind of cool, though, but Halloween does go by so quick. Eight crazy nights. That, but that would be kind of sick, <clears throat> just wear costumes for like a whole month. Yeah, I mean, you nobody's stopping you. Yeah, nobody really is, but then again, if you show up October 1st, like the supermarket, you know, like a Frankenstein costume is just weird. Yeah, yeah but that's when you look at those people and you say, get on my shit. Look how happy I am. I'm Frankenstein. I'm grocery shopping. That's You're true. just grocery shopping. Do you know how exciting this is for me? That's true. Yeah. Set that trend. Now, <clears throat> what is it now? Uh, Tammy, how, how long have you been in this line of business? Like, wh what would you say your line of business is? Oh, I'm just a creator. I produce uh, Hollywood Paranormal Podcasts, and I write out our episodes and research, but I do a lot of the field work, which is investigating the paranormal. It's like you're a ghost hunter. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say I'm a, a hunter, a researcher, an investigator. <laughs> Like, I really put a lot of time into what I'm really searching for. Damn. So, like, you, that's kind of like, because you almost have to obsess over, over like, uh, paranormal subjects when uh, when you're doing research on them. Like, you kind of have to really get in the mind of, like, the, the person that's no longer there. You got to have to, re you, the entity doesn't just come out just because you call it out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, it's just trying to figure out what we're truly dealing with. Like, yeah, I'm, I believe in ghosts. I just want to know what they are. They could be so many things. And that is something that uh, is a question that I've been having in my mind and had in my mind for a very long time. And the reason why I got into it is because I'm originally from a very haunted city. I'm from New Orleans. Mm. Yeah, that's it, it's like grimy haunted out there, bro. Oh, it's grimy haunted and heavy. It's very heavy there. Like, uh, you know, you don't, you don't strike me as a person from New Orleans. I mean, you don't have an accent. <laughs> I you know. just give me a couple more shots, and you know, <laughs> I'll tell you where I, where I'm at. So, it's always yeah. been like this a city that's that's been full of like mysticism in its own way yeah. because they always have tarot card. I've never been, yeah, but I've seen so many documentaries on like how not to get scammed and all this stuff. Like, yo, yeah. there's like there's like it, it's it's grimy out there, bro. Like, you will literally think you're gonna go get your palm red and like you'll get jacked. I had a good yeah. time out there. Oh, you been out there? Yeah, I played uh, Voodoo Fest. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I love Voodoo Fest. Yeah. I miss it. Oh, that's that's where you feel grimy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Voodoo Fest was definitely gross, yeah. but it was a lot of fun. But we went to Bourbon Street the night before. 
blacked out pretty early on and i remember just seeing a bunch of pictures on my phone the next day and i was like okay tight at least you found your phone at least i had all of <laughs> you that found your we, phone. we had it we had a guide so i think he kept us you know properly wrangled you get flashed uh i think so yeah i mean they did so we you know we were on tour and stuff like that so we told one of the bars that we were at you know what we were up to and they're like oh well come on upstairs so they gave us a bunch of like beaded necklaces and stuff and we got to stand out on the balcony oh I really do remember yelling at Captain Planet, but that, that I don't remember much outside of that. Now you said you've uh, you, you grew up in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Like, did you? How did you even get? How did you even discover the interest into this field of work? Because, like, in order for you to be interested in the paranormal, that's kind of something that you kind of have to like as a little kid. I remember me myself. I would be going to the library at school and I would be going to looking at like the books. I'm like, you guys have books about aliens? Yeah, it has books about like witches. Mm -hmm. You guys have, and I would be looking at stuff like that. I remember like my mom telling me like, why are you looking at that? Like, you know, it's just like weird. <laughs> but like, how did that start for you? Same way, you know, I'm looking at goosebumps. I used to go and um, get the goosebumps, um, scary stories to tell in the dark in the library. I used to get everything and anything that said ghosts in it. I used to write stories for my classes in English like ghost stories and um, they were always popular. And for me growing up, I worked in theater. I worked in a lot of theater and I'm a costume designer by day and I do, you know, paranormal research and a paranormal podcast by night. Uh, but being a costume- like you, you work, I'm sorry, you work at a theater like Phantom of the Opera? Um, not so much Phantom of the <laughs> Opera, but a lot of theaters that I have worked in are pretty haunted. They're haunted places. And I worked in my first theater in New Orleans. It was a very haunted theater. I saw my first apparition there. And that's what really catapulted me into what I do now. Okay, so we're talking about first paranormal um, experience. What was your actual first paranormal? What's your origin story? My origin story. I saw a door open when I was little and that was it. No, it was more like... Like the wind. <laughs> I know, it's everybody's <laughs> experience. I didn't get my first paranormal experience until I was 19 or 20. I was working in a summer stock theater. Um, I was cutting some fabric in the front foyer of this theater because the shop was just so busy and they needed more space. So it was a dark and stormy afternoon as a really great setting in a very old theater and I'm cutting fabric and I keep on seeing this man standing uh, on my right by this banister of the staircase. And every time I would look up, he's not there, but I could see him in my mind's eye. He's wearing like black shirt, black pants, black hair, black mustache. And I could, I could really clear him, clearly see him clear as day. And I just felt like I was being watched. I felt like there was a presence with me. And I go back into the shop, we're having lunch and I'm talking to the women there and I'm like, hey, is this theater haunted? And the props person comes in and they tell the props person, oh, I think Tammy saw Bob. And the props girl's like, yeah, that's your initiation into the theater is this ghost Bob. And I was like, well, what, do, what does Bob look like? Oh, he wears all black and he has a black mustache and he has black hair. And it mm. turned out that Bob was the lighting designer of this theater many years ago. He died of cancer. He loved his job so much that he never left. And the reason why he wears black is because that's what you wear in theater. You wear your theater blacks. You're always wearing black clothes backstage so you can blend in with the background. And he shows himself to people that are new to the theater. And I was that was my first year working in that theater. And, and I saw it, him. And you saw him as an apparition or you just... How, I how really you... thought he was a person like just the way he was looking at me. He was just like, you know, hand like elbow on the banister, hand on his cheek. And he was just looking at me cutting fabric, maybe could, because could I was wearing a him? skirt. <laughs> could you see him like how you would how I would see him? Like, yeah, he just looked clear as day. Like every time, like in my corner of my eye, like 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 how I could see you and him. It was like, oh, that's a person like that could be one of the directors. And every time I would look up, he was gone but I would still like feel like someone was there and I would still see him. And sure enough, like it was validated. Wow, that's tight. Yeah, it was, I, and I had no idea, no idea about the history of the theater, no idea about ghost stories. It was more like, hey, you're here to work, start cutting fabric, and this is what happened. But um, like that itself, how did you feel afterwards? Like, did you feel like, cause usually when you have a paranormal experience, like it kind of like, like when something paranormal happens, cause like I've had my fair share, but like 
you kind of the first couple times you go into like a, a state of like paralyzation because you you're you're, you're like kind of like seeing something that you that doesn't register in your brain. Yeah, but for me at this moment, what was res- registering is that this this was either my imagination or it was a real person. And afterwards I was more excited, but in denial, like, nah, I couldn't have seen, no, that was just too good to be true. That's too good to be true. How, how can that happen? And it happens Did you see him again? after that. No, but there were other things that would happen around the costume shop. So that, that, that was the origin where like all your haunted experience kind of, that happened. is, yeah. Like the birthplace, the seed where, you know, it just like catapulted me in my, journey of the paranormal and what what happened um like second that you were just like all right this is like i'm gonna see this like or what what was the like the second happening that you were just like damn i gotta have to get used to this um working in film so when i would work in film we would go and work in these old locations and old sound stages and these were like really historical locations and i just knew entering like there was something there and sure enough things would happen when we were set up Uh, We would talk to the security guards. We would talk to the owners and get a little more information. And sure enough, like whatever my spidey senses would pick up on the location, it, you know, was confirmed that, you know, oh, there's something here. People have seen things. And there was one point where I was shooting a film at this plantation in Florida in a very, very small town. And we were setting up. I was sitting up next to this like study library and it's it was preserved is a historical plantation. So it? It's, it's somewhat preserved. Like they use it for like movies and weddings <laughs> and um, other things, despite the fact that it was, you know, has this like dark history, but um, they were like, I was right next to the study. I was filling up my tank with water for the steamer and I hear like a thump against the wall and, um, the lighting designer starts to scream and he was like, no, that didn't. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Exactly like that. (laughs) And I go next door. I'm like, is everything okay? He's like, I shit you not, Tammy, this book from across here flew and hit the wall by itself. And I heard it. And I was like, that's that was that what, what the thump was. He's like, yeah. And he was like all white. He was just completely pale. And ever since then, like we would have weird things that would happen. Um, our equipment would go missing. Our costumes would end up in weird places. Um, when towards the end of the night, we would always clean and organize. Um, we had an AD that would have to sleep at the location because we had fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of equipment, and he would hear like footsteps, voices in the house that just didn't belong to any of us. So tight. <laughs> so. That just sounds really, really, really scary. It, yeah, he ended up sleeping in his car. Like, we would come onto location, and we would ask him, like, hey, what's going on? He's like, uh, I just don't want to sleep in there anymore. I'll sleep in the car. I'll sleep in the car, but do not ask me to sleep in that house. So, it, like, and he is, you know, he's just there to do a job. He had no idea what, like, this house was, what it <laughs> held. So, he was pretty scared, this poor guy. <laughs> now, would you say that, um, all right, so that's when you would you start processing that, all right, this is going to be happening a lot. Would you say what you yeah. have is a gift? I wouldn't say it's a gift, um, but eventually, as I'm being absorbed to a lot of these places, and when I started the podcast of Hollywood Paranormal, and I wanted it to be more than just lip service, I wanted to go out and investigate, I started to open myself more and more to where now I was really seeing and hearing a lot of things, and even smelling it, too, which is really interesting. Because, yeah, like, that's a, that's a common thing. Like, when sometimes it doesn't have to be, like, a full-on apparition. Sometimes, no. Like, bro, I heard, like, the, 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 the darker the kind of entity it is, the more foul the smell will be. Yeah, a lot of times, yeah, I heard, like, people say, oh, there's a sulfur smell. But there's one location where it was a group of girls in an apartment, and they would call it the sewer ghost because it would smell like sewage. And I would even help them investigate by trying to counteract their claims. Like, maybe it's a sewer line. Maybe it's... Yeah. The building and they hired plumbing to come in nothing so this smell would actually occur in one place and then the next day it would happen in a random room in a closet in a bathroom in the kitchen and they it, we had a psychic that would come on this location she's like yeah there's this like weird apparition that smells i hate it and it just likes to circulate around here 
and a little poop ghost. It was a little shit ghost. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that's kind of weird though. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. There's a lot of weird out there, and if you think it's weird, it's weirder than you think. Do you think so. that's how XG would haunt people? Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's, he's a ghost and he wouldn't take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Like they they all day. <laughs> <laughs> Just random Tecate cans everywhere. Yeah. Why the fuck? I don't even drink. So, so you wouldn't say that what you had, what, what, um, like you're an empath? I learned of that term, like the more I started investigating, like that's what I have. I'm very empathic. Even my sister and my grandmother was very empathic too, from what I learned. And my sister's a little more, my younger sister's a little more sensitive. Like she could sense things. She was living in an old house in New Orleans and she was like, I've been sensing this man in this house for a very long time. And it turned out that the location where her house was built was next to an old blacksmith shop. And it was popular and known for this, you know, man who was this famous blacksmith in the city and turned out that he was lingering around her house. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Um, you seen The Shining? Yes. <laughs> um, Danny's character. What do you call like? What does he have? Like telekinetic? Like is he a clairvoyant? Like how would you describe him as far as like the actual practice goes? Or for Danny, especially like, have you even seen Doctor Sleep? It goes even deeper. I've actually been watching that film. It's so good because that is astro. You see a lot of a good example of astral projection. Okay. But I think for Danny, like he has a huge embodiment of like being psychic and being almost telekinetic in a way. Like he is like a, what they call a, would call a starseed child. Now, what what would you say? Sorry, I had to get some water from the chicken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what would you say has been the scariest paranormal experience that you've had? Because I imagine, like, now that you've had it, like, like you're like, nah, fuck that, it's El Diablo. Like, yeah, yeah like, it's, that's what I, like, see, people associate when you have a paranormal experience, they just automatically think that it's going to be a bad one always. Yeah, I would say my experience is when I'm dealing with the paranormal is always with the living. If it's anything I learned from the movie Beetlejuice is... You never trust the living, and that scares me more than anything. I've been on in investigations with uh, with one man who was very inebriated and threatened to beat me because I didn't believe that he was capturing voices on this voice box. And he was really, like, he was really hammered. And what he was collecting were voices, but it was nothing in relation to the location. Yeah. <laughs> so it was... <laughs> It was more like radio jingles, and it was it was a pretty scary experience. Like they had to escort him off the property, but it was after after they escorted him, is when things got weird. And it turned out that um, according to his friends that stayed behind, because there were paranormal investigators out of Nevada, that they had investigated this location with um, supposedly demonic energy or dark energy. And um, we caught something on the CCTV cameras that looked like this man was sitting on top of a car. And we first thought it was him, but they were like, no, I don't see his car, he left. And the scariest thing happened a little later in the evening when um, after I left, um, I got a call from the owner of this location. He was like, Tammy, you're not gonna believe what happened. And I said, what happened? Well, after all you guys left, it was me and my friend, we were just shooting the shit here in the house. And my dog started acting funny. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, they started to pee on my floor in front of the front door. And they started whining and they started backing away from the door. Damn. And we started hearing knocks at the door. And I, he has cameras all over this house, even outside. So he goes to his little computer room and he's like, there's nothing there. But he was still hearing, him and his friend were still hearing these knocks. And whatever was, whatever was out there what we believed was connected to this dude and probably wanted to stay in that location and was trying to get its way back in. So that, mm -hmm. that, that uh, entity was attached to the dude? We think it was. Like, that is our hypothesis. That's what I think. Like, I think I even still have the picture of it, but it was very sinister. Like, the, the guy had a lot of weird energy to begin with, and he was very negative, and it just got more and more aggressive the more he was investigating. 
And of course, we I'm sure alcohol comes into play, but it was just a very it was a very weird night with a very weird dude. And it was it was a little scary. Wow, that that does sound like quite the scary situation, though. Like, yeah, because uh, I mean, it, it sounds like kind of unpredictable, you know, like being with some like how did you guys know that guy, though? Um, the gentleman that was hosting the event or well, his name is David. No, the, the deranged oh. guy. Oh, that other he came with a group. He, he was someone that we just didn't know. Like, he just, like, tagged along with this group. And I even asked the group, I'm like, how long do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? Like, what is his story? And they were like, well, he started investigating with us not too long ago. He's a little off. And he was drinking tonight. And he's, something's been up with him ever since we went to this location that is known to have, like, negative activity. So we don't know if something latched on. Damn, you saw a dude get cursed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that curse stayed. It was just the oddest thing. But I'm gonna try to find this picture for you guys because it was it, it was weird. It was it was a very, very interesting night and it felt very off. And I investigated this place several times, but that place it, it, it's a lot of times it's also what people bring in that could really fuck up a place. And I've been to so many locations where it's like People really exacerbate the hell out of a place. They just bring in too much shit of their own and they just leave it there as a trauma dump. So that's that's a legit thing that can happen. Somebody could just bring in their own demons to like a haunted place. And oh, a hundred percent. And then it's like, oh, hey, now we're really going to stir shit up. Oh, yeah. I went to a location in Mitchell, Indiana called the Whispers Estate. And this place already had a lot of activity, has a lot of history. It's haunted. But then you go to a certain level and something in there was telling me I was like, I don't know what it was about this place, but it was opening me up more and more. I was starting to see words in my head and it kept on asking, like, go in this room, go in this room, go see what he has. And every room I would go into or be led to by whatever was there, it was pissed because I'm like, what the hell is this? And he's like, oh, this is a table that we collected at this event where they would do demonic sacrifices. I'm like, what the hell? And then I would go into another room and it was like a room with a Ouija board. And then we went to a third, the third floor. We were led there by the psychic and the psychic said, oh, you have a psychomantium here. And a psychomantium is a room filled with mirrors. So it was just a mirrored room. And she's like, yeah, this is where all the heavy shit happens. And it turned out that all these people were coming to this location, all these so-called hunters and researchers. And these are people calling out demonic energies, trying to like, get a stir out of something that was there and it turned out that whatever they brought in it just stayed there and it was just becoming more and more negative and more and more aggressive and the psychic was like yeah you allow people to mess with boards they open shit that they don't know how to control they don't close it properly they come in here for a rise and then they trauma dump all their energy and all their shit here so it stays here and it manifests and it just causes a lot of problems Damn, I didn't think of it like that. People can just like trauma dump or just like go agitate other ghosts, like their ghost property, you know, be like, yeah. hey. Because the psychic that was there, like I was picking up, like, I feel like there's a family here. She's like, yeah, you're right. There's a family here. They're on the first and second level. But whatever's on the third floor is where people really like to fuck, like fuck around and find out and then leave behind. So those are things that I've been like noticing a lot in certain locations. People like to fuck around and find out. Oh, fuck around, find out, and then dip out. Like, they just dip, and they leave whatever they brought in. Some A lot of the times, they just leave it there. So the way to get uncursed is to go to this place, <laughs> drop your bullshit off place. with all the other ghosts for a play date, and then Or scoot. any place. I mean, our minds are so powerful. We could create so much with them. We could create, um, what is it, an egregore. We can create a tulpa. We could create a ghost with our mind, and it's been... What? Hold on, I'm just I was going to say, that, yeah. you gotta, I don't know those Pokemon you just said. What are those? <laughs> yeah. Um, so in, 19, in the 1970s in Canada, there is, have you heard of the Philip experiment? The Philip? No. Okay, so the Philip, it was a movie um, called The Quiet Ones that was inspired by this. I think um, So I highly that. recommend that you watch yeah. that film. So the Philip experiment, oh yeah, and um, was conducted by two psychologists. It was a husband and wife. They had a team of 15 people that would meet for 10 years, and they their job was to create a ghost called Philip. So they created this ghost named Philip, who was a knight. They gave him like all sorts of like accolades, a story. It was like a novella to them. Like 
he was married to this woman who he didn't love then fell in love with a witch that was burnt at the stake. They went above and beyond to really put a lot of energy and time into this story about Philip. So they would go in, talk about Philip and try to summon him with a seance. They would do table tipping. And sure enough, 10 years later, they ended up getting responses from Philip. They started to get things that would move on their own as a response by this ghost that they created. Could, but could that just be any entity, like kind of like a Ouija board? You know what I mean? Like how you don't really get whoever you're going to get. It could just be somebody else pretending to could be. Could be. It could be, you know. But um, any time that they would call him forward by his name, things would happen. So whatever was there was responsive to his name, Philip. And um, it was proven that we can create these thought forms with our minds. And then in the 90s, we had the Skippy experiment in Australia where these team of, ex of scientists created a ghost named Skippy based off of the Philip experiment. And those are things that we can often create with our minds. I just really enjoy imagining like the science team being like, Skippy's loose! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody run! Yeah. I just like that itself though, like sounds kind of crazy because not like crazy and like, I don't believe it, but the mind is very powerful and sometimes like, you know how you can create stress for your own and then let's like you can handle it in so many ways but yeah. but you can also hurt yourself by the way you handle it you know what oh, i mean oh yeah you can hurt yourself and you can hurt others i mean there is the rspk which is uh what is it uh remedial spontaneous psychokinetic energy and there is a woman named sonia konovic konovic in russia i i believe that was her last name but she was one of the main subjects of a Russian experiment to figure out if people were capable of telekinetic um, energy. It's one of the energies that we see in poltergeist like environments. So when people say, oh, I'm haunted by a poltergeist, I'm like, so you're haunting yourself. Damn, I didn't think of it like that. Like, that's There's no cases that I've ever proven, probably one or two where a poltergeist has a full body apparition, but all the others is just us manipulating things to fall over, things to fly. Even in those locations where like it's random, like, cause that's happened, that's happened randomly here. Like where, I mean, it hasn't happened in a long time, but like in moments of like, like just, just like, I guess disagreement or just mm -hmm. when people were just like mad at, at each other. And like, it was kind of like, you have to keep it quiet. Yes. Yes. So a lot of times it's us that has an impact on the environment than the environment having an impact on us. And I was talking about this with Dr. Kirian O'Keefe, who's a parapsychologist out of the UK, and he teaches about all this stuff at the University of Manchester. And he was telling me that he was investigating a couple that wanted to be haunted. And the couple would try to summon a spirit. They would try so hard, never worked. And then they started to get into fights. They were fighting a lot. They were having problems, like marital problems. And every time, yeah, every time they have a fight, something would break, something would fly across the room. And it was more like, oh, they were creating this energy. So he recommended first and foremost that they get therapy. Divorce. And, which I think it did lead to divorce. And sure enough, when they amicably like decided to split, things definitely dissipated in the house. So they stopped. So they got the honey. Uh -huh. They got the haunting that they wanted. They got it. But I oh, guess massive. maybe the haunting was trying to tell them, like, you guys need to go. You guys don't belong together. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things where, like, that's where I'm trying to say where what are we truly are dealing with? Are we are we dealing with something that is psychokinetic energy? Are we dealing with the geomagnetism of the Earth, which is residual haunting, the stone tape theory? Are we dealing with extraterrestrials or are we dealing with something that is a discarded agent, which is a ghost? So, see, I've always wondered about that because with like the uh, location specific stuff, yeah, I've always wondered like why why are they tethered specifically to a location? Uh, like, there's a house in our neighborhood up in the valley, and it's been demolished and rebuilt, I think, twice now. It's on its third version of the home. But it apparently is like haunted, like nobody stays there for very long. So I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of neat. But like, yeah, I wonder uh, what gives that specific entity or entities claim 
to that plot, like that property specifically, and why are they bound by like the fence and they don't go haunt the neighbors or something like that? Like I've always wondered about that stuff. Like yeah, why what does the rules energy are. to specifically stick there, and what are the rules? And I'm sure there are plenty of rules. I mean, if I've even heard of places like that that have been torn down mm -hmm. and the wood or whatever material has been repurposed and sent somewhere. To oh, build, shit. And that energy gets taken there. Damn, can you imagine haunting like a tiny piece of wood and then, I don't know, just getting relocated oh, against yeah. your will? That'd be well, a trip. In the 80s and 90s, you I don't know if you were a big fan of Unsolved Mysteries, mm -hmm. but there are always these ghost stories connected to wooden bunk beds. And, oh shit! Oh, that these sucks. These wooden bunk beds had they were purchased by a family in some random shop. They were put into a room, and all of a sudden, the kids were being thrown off the beds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's funny. They're seeing like a lot of shadow figures. Things were happening, and once the bed was destroyed, it everything stopped, which is really interesting. It's like what? Well, what was the root wood? Where was that originally? Yeah, like, like where did from? you get this shit from? Yeah, did someone? Was someone tied to a tree and killed and now their spirits attached to this wood? Like, the, you know, things like that. This honestly makes for a really good anti-recycling PSA. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, be careful what, how what you recycle. <laughs> hey, hey, don't recycle everything, yes, all right? Don't repurpose anything. You might carry that energy. Mm -hmm. you might get haunted. So what do you so you said only two locations you actually believe that that's they're actually haunted? rest of them you say like everybody you're haunting yourself not necessarily i believe that there you know there are locations that are haunted but haunted by what you know is what i'm trying to figure out and sometimes there are places where i go and it's not even a haunting it's not even ghosts it's just you know carbon monoxide poisoning there is an apartment in north hollywood of a girlfriend of mine who kept on seeing shadowy figures in her room she would have these like weird dizzy spells and it turned out that she was suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning holy Damn. shit yeah holy shit she i mean <laughs> I, I did the investigation and something was like i don't know it doesn't seem right like i don't think it's ghosts i think it's something else and it turned out like she didn't like something happened with the batteries like she didn't change the batteries the oh, carbon monoxide fuck. detector and she was suffering from this and sure enough when everything was fixed, everything stopped. That's so gnarly. So a lot of times it could be in our head, but like I said, it's like, do we know what we're truly dealing with? And could it be explainable? Do you think like night terrors or sleep paralysis are at all linked to that? Because I've had a lot of that. It's a lot of studies about that. Pretty much your body is asleep, but your mind is awake yeah it's what it is and it's been scientifically proven that you know there's a lot of people around the world that have gone through this now my hypothesis is does it allow does it allow our minds to be more open and susceptible to the spirit world when we're when our minds are awake and when we're in that pretty comfortable state of state with our bodies you know we're more open during that time to see what is really around us yeah so those are things that i always wonder i'm like yeah i feel like that in some ways is scientifically proven to be us you know our minds doing that but could it be possible that we are able to tap into our third eye when we're in that state yeah because like mm -hmm. anytime i've had sleep paralysis i have physically felt everything that transpired and yes. that's like one time i got thrown around a room by like some See? dark entity and i could feel my back like i still remember like feeling my shoulders and my back hitting like my mirror in the corner of the wall and stuff like that and yeah. then waking up sore and you couldn't move right the whole time because your body's asleep but your mind is so lucid and so awake that i'm wondering like if you're in that state could your body and everything else be vulnerable to whatever energy is around to do this to you. yeah because if, yeah. it's, if it's mostly psychic energy and stuff like exactly. that yeah that would i be mean a we all have state. a psychic ability could that ability be heightened in that state yeah and that is really interesting and that's what i really want to learn more about yeah that that i mean the the way like that you're trying to figure out what ghosts are it, may, it puts a whole different perspective on things because I just automatically assumed it was just like lost spirits, but now you just yeah. kind of you just kind of broke it down. Like you got to think of the paranormal as an octopus. Like we neglect to see the entire creature. We're just too busy studying its tentacles right there. 
we're you know naming the tentacles oh it's a demon it's a poltergeist it's a ghost it's aliens and we're totally neglecting well what is the purpose of all that Sam that also, is the entire creature. Yeah. Yeah. That's just yesterday. I like that. Cause yeah, I was also, you know, I always thought about it. Like even if you don't have any religion or anything and this stuff's happening, yeah. is it like a quantum thing? Like two things existing in the same place at exactly. once and then like phasing in and out or whatever. But yeah. Like, yeah. For example, shadow people, you know what shadow people are. Yep. Yeah. So for us, a lot of people are, Oh, it's demons. They're demonic and en- like they're negative energy. But there is a neighborhood in Dearborn or Deer Park, Michigan. It's a huge community of Muslim people. And according to their religion, uh, shadow people are the silhouettes of their loved ones because every time they see them, there's a light shown behind their back. And then they just see the silhouette. It's their mm-hmm. loved ones and their ancestors coming back. So how, who are we to say that it's demonic when to other religions and other people of different faiths, they have a different belief of that energy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they could man- those energies could manifest themselves very differently, you know? Mm-hmm. It could, but how do they react? And according to a lot of these people, like, yeah, some of them are feel fearful because they don't know what they're, they don't know what they're dealing with. But at the same time, like, are they connecting with a higher, a higher, you know, energy or a higher entity? Um, is it, do they, the main question that I always ask people during an investigation of people who are going through this is do you feel like your life is in danger and a lot of the times they're like no i just want to know what it is it kind of scares me because you don't know about it we fear the things that we don't know can you feel when a ghost is present i could feel like something's in the room yeah like i was like i, I would just go into a room and say god like there's something here with us or it doesn't feel right or something happened in this room like you kind of feel that energy and um Sure enough, like it just kind of parallels with whatever's happening there. Do you feel anything in this building? I feel like there's a lot of residual shifts. I feel like obviously this was a warehouse and a lot of people used to produce here, but I feel like there's a lot of like trauma here at the same time, like anger, like different emotions. When I came in here, but it could be, it could be the area as well. I don't think it, it, I think there's a lot of residual here, but I don't know if there's something here, here, I guess is the residual meaning that it comes and goes residual meaning. Like it's something that has been imprinted on the property. Mm. Like I feel like whoever worked here, man dumped a lot of stuff here and the walls, the wood recorded it and it replays it you know it's crazy that you say that because the 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 one quote-unquote entity that has manifested itself and and it had like you know it's been confirmed by his son Mm -hmm. is the owner who built this building Mm -hmm. likes to come back and check on shit yeah that could be another thing too i feel like this has a lot of history to it and there's a I feel like a lot of energy. You don't know a lot of the history. Oh, place. you should look into I feel like you should look into it. But I feel like what I feel like a lot of things here come and go. Like they visit and they leave. My apartment in West Hollywood was like this. Like I, I felt like things would come and go. I mean, is you would you say is that that happens because we have so many people coming through here? Yes. On the regular like and, and some of these people, they're like spiritual people. Like be real, for example, like he's 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 a priest in, 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 in the Ifa. Mm-hmm. Like he's what you call Baba Lao. Like oh, so he's yeah. actively, and it, I, ironically, in this room before we turned it into the studio, this is where he used to do readings at. I bet, I it it's a really, yeah. I just I, like I felt it coming in the door. Like I get like kind of goosebumps or I feel kind of fuzzy, but it was just. I, plus, you have a lot of things here. Like, what do you mean? You have things here that have energy. Like items. Yeah, you have items that have something here, like. Something good or something bad? Not something bad. good or bad, but I feel like it has something like attached to it. Like there's an energy to it. Like I don't know if you collect vintage items, but damn, you're, you're, you're... <laughs> I get weird energy from the Nas tank personally. Like you have <laughs> items here that have some stories to them, and well, you should. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, the... look on the rack. On the rack itself, there's a lot of items that Ezone has. You know. Purchase. Yeah, I was gonna say like yeah, like the, I I do shop thrift a lot, and I do like I do shop it a lot. You know, I go to the Swami every weekend. Yeah. And I resell a lot of things. I, a lot of things come and go. 
I keep certain items, but the items that I do keep, I kind of do. I'm like, hey, man, if there's something attached to this shit, y'all got to leave. This is my shit now. That's good. You know what I mean? Or like, I'm like, I'm like, you don't want to fuck around and start shaking shit up in my house because yeah. I'm finna call my madrina and we gonna kill some pigeons and we gonna fucking get you the fuck out. I can already tell you <laughs> or establish you equalize it. <laughs> yeah, like I draw the line because I'm I, like, if I have to go to the yeah. fact that I gotta kill some chickens to get rid of you, yeah. I'm gonna be angrier than what the. <laughs> Like, I'm going to be 10 times angrier. Like, you're cool if you want to stay around and move shit when I'm not here. Yeah. Just don't break anything. That's cool, homie. But don't fuck around with my shit. Like, yeah, you're just like Tanya. Would you, uh, would you be open to Doodle. using something else outside of chickens? I kind of find that offensive. <laughs> it's pigeons, chickens. Pigeons is fine. We don't, we don't fuck with pigeons. Yeah, it's a... But, um, yeah, that's... See, that's that's crazy. I mean... I don't think I have anything. I mean, but then again, you know, obviously you're around these things. But yeah, I, I do have items where I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I never got a weird, weird, weird uh, vibe of it. But some of the items that I do get is like pop culture things. So like, there'll be like an ET from the 1980s, and you're like, yo, how do you know that like some kid didn't like die that while was playing his with favorite yeah. fucking toy, and now you fucking have it, and he's like, you motherfucker, you're smoking weed around my toy. <laughs> 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 yeah, like or, you never know what you're getting when when you go to those places and what you're picking up and bringing home. And I've heard a lot of stories too of things having some sort of attachment or energy to them. What's uh? Do you guys have anything in your homes that you think could potentially be haunted? Yes. Or okay, what do you got? I got something too. But yeah, what do you I have got? a key that's supposedly from an old insane asylum. And pair of keys um, to an insane asylum. It's a key that opened to a, a room um, of the filing room of this insane asylum in, in upstate New York. And and um, the off, there's been a shift. There's been a weird shift in the room where I keep this key. I was very like apprehensive about it. Like, I don't know if this is real. I got it on eBay. But the man that I spoke to said, no, I, I would go to the um, it was the Greenwick um, insane asylum. And they had auctions of all the things that they, you know, pulled from, you know, the site before it went into demolition. So I said, okay, all right, I, I believe you now. I, and let, let's see what happens. So one evening I was coming home and I thought I heard my husband upstairs. And I heard walking. I heard movement. I was like, okay, he's home, whatever. I get a text message from him. He's like, hey, what do you want from El Pollo Loco? And I was like, what? Wait, you're not here? He's like, no, I've been out doing errands. I'm going to go pick up dinner. What do you want? Just text me, whatever. I'm like, wait, so you're not in the house house. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I walked in, I remember turning off the alarm or, or ring. I was like, oh, but I thought he was here unless he like set it up. Like I was so confused and it was a, it was a late evening. So my mind was like elsewhere. I'm like, wait, but I, that's right. Like the alarm was still on so i go upstairs nothing's upstairs the the key is in the room where i heard a lot of the commotion and i was like fuck i think there is something here but i feel like whatever is there doesn't it just it wants to be left alone and it wants to sleep that's the feeling <laughs> that i get from that room because when i when i have people that come and visit i don't tell them about the key that's in the guest room Cause that's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of purposely put it on there just to see if they feel anything. And they're like, no, I had a really good night. Like I felt really comfortable in the room. Like so it was it's a, dormant. Yeah. It's, it's like, they're like, your room feels very cozy. It doesn't have a lot in it. It's just the bed and the computer and a desk. And, but they're okay. like, I just feel like, a, like I feel very serene in that room. So whatever's there is probably like, I just want to be left alone. That sounds like a pretty chill ghost. I think so. I really do. But I've heard some weird things in that room, like knocks that are validating or answering questions that I'm asking myself. And it's, yeah, what it's about, interesting. What about you, Ezone? Do you have anything that you think might be haunted? I mean, now that she, she mentioned it, like, I don't, I don't think anything like haunted, like where it's like, it's going to mess things up. But then again, I could be wrong because like some of these things, like, bro, like I, like I, I I get I stress easily and I and and you know I mean like I'm I'm very volatile, bro. So like sometimes I feel where I'm like maybe some of these items they're they're just like they're like yo man we can't wait till you get angry because like this is the kind of energy we got. Yeah. Feed, feeding feeding that shit. Yeah, yeah it could, like it, I, you could count it could counter out it could yeah build up from that. Like, like you know it's be like oh look at this motherfucker all happy as shit not today you know what I mean like <laughs> no because that's really how certain thing certain uh, entities work, bro. Like they like to. 
like especially when you hex somebody, bro. Like you think you're not throwing in a spirit that's gonna go in there and play hide and seek with you, bro. They're gonna go in there and fuck shit up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're they're gonna go in there and fuck shit up. Like fights with your girlfriend. You can't find shit. You get angry like times ten over the dumbest shit. Yeah, like it, 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 houses uh, could be like that. Things could be like that. It's just like yeah, the more you feed it, the more it just kind of reacts to you. I got a painting and. We, um, me and my wife hit a um, an estate sale, and we got a really good price on everything. But we got a painting of this guy who had passed away. We got a grandfather clock and a giant mirror. And the grandfather clock is broken, but goes <laughs> off every once in a while. Um, and we, the the guy's name is George. I forget his last name, but we call him Beautiful George. He's very handsome. Oh. But anytime somebody comes to the house, like kind of as a joke and also just like good measure, have yeah. everybody say hi to him. He, you know, acknowledge beautiful George. Um, but it's oh. funny because my wife. Yeah, don't invite me in your house, dude. I mean, he's already there. He's a part of the family. It's I know, whatever. but I'm finna go. Be, I'm finna like be like, be like just talk shit to the. To the Fuck you! Don't come <laughs> to my house. <laughs> Beautiful George is a handsome, beautiful Beautiful's human being. Get ugly, <laughs> yeah. but it's funny because like me and his wife, like his widow, got along really well. Like yeah. when we were buying buying all the stuff, uh, it was an all day you know engagement, and uh, she and I actually got to hang out a bunch. And like you know, she was like, "Oh, you and George have gotten along so well." I was like, "Tight, give me the painting." Um, but yeah, my wife has heard like stomping around and stuff like that during the day when she's in the shower and I'm at work and. Yeah. So she's like, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, is he being mean? And she's like, well, no, it's just kind of scary. And I was like, okay, well, but, you know, George got to move around, let him do his thing. He's probably venturing around there. Maybe he's protecting the home. You never know. Never know. But all I know is, you know, I like George. You know, I, I think the other thing is I also, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like you were saying with the energy thing. Like, I've kind of embraced George as, like, a positive addition to the house. Mm -hmm. So whether there is a ghost there or not, any energy about it I'm putting out there is all positive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe that's why it's, you know, staying chill. Yeah. You're feeding a good energy. You called it Handsome George and Beautiful oh, yeah. George. Beautiful George, man. And, yeah, <laughs> it's just reacting to it. It's like, okay, I'm at bay. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Have you yes. been to the Las Vegas Haunted Museum? No, not yet. I I haven't like investigated Las Vegas yet. I really want to. Oh, so you just do California? Yeah, I've been here or or elsewhere. I go to New Orleans. I've been going a lot to the Midwest lately. Like I I just did a huge investigation in Louisville this past summer and um in Indiana. And your aunt and I are going to um do um we're gonna do an investigation at a private home here in huntington park yeah. wow a that, private home yeah this gentleman really has something going on and i felt it when i walked in i was like this house is not clear <laughs> like he's been living there for 20 years and i just felt like he really needs help he doesn't know what he's dealing with and based on my research there was like a death or two on the property i'm like did you know that someone died here and he's like no but there's a woman here that comes into bed with me every night. And Whoa. I was like, what? No. So he has this ghost of a woman that climbs into bed with him. This dude like, been doing this shit for 20 years? Yeah. And he don't it, want us to find out what that ghost do to him. <laughs> I'm about to say, he's married to that ghost. Yeah, yeah he, um, he's like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be sleeping in my room and I'll hear the door open, hear footsteps. And it's like a body, like a person jumping into bed with me. And I just, it just feels very feminine. Like it feels like a woman is right next to me. But going deeper into his life, it turned out that he had, um, I think, a girlfriend or a fiance that passed away. So these are things that I'm like, okay, now we're piecing certain things together. And this is where I need Tanya to come in and help, and especially help him because. Yeah. I don't want to go in there and, and for someone's like excitement off of someone's trauma just to capture something. I really want to help him and figure out what's what's going on. You want to get some closure. He needs a lot of closure. He's been living in this house for 20 years. And what's really interesting is not just him, but his family members have been staying with him and they don't want to stay there. His neighbors have seen things that that validates it. You want to hear a good story? Like he was working on this old Mustang outside one day. He looks up at his neighbor who lives right in front of him 
the neighbor's waving at the house. Like he's going like this. Oh no. And he's doing like he's talking to someone. And he's like, no one's in the house. The guy that's working on the car, the owner, he's like, no one's in the fucking house. Who's he talking to? So he goes and he greets his neighbor and the neighbor looks at him. He's like, oh, how did you come? How did you, you were just up there. And he was like, no, I was here working on the car. He's like, how did you get down here so fast? He's like, who are you talking to and waving at? He's like, you. I was waving and talking to you. And he points at the this little window, which is like the window to the attic. Yeah. And he's like, there was a man. I thought it was you. And we were chatting like he was trying to tell me something and he was waving at me and I was waving back. And the guy was like, the owner's like, I, there's no one in the house. Wow, that's nuts. Uh -huh. So he's like, now there's a woman and there's a man. And he's like, oh, I've also seen a child. So Ooh. there's a lot of things like it gets there's a lot of pieces that we're trying to figure out, like what is there and who is there. I'm going to do you a solid rock because I know I feel like you're dying. In no, I'm actually freezing. Are you? <laughs> yeah. What? My fan, it's like right on my hip. Oh, all right. Oh. But if well, you're burning up. I kind of I, I kind of am, but I was going to go get some water. But yeah, carry it on, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a trip, though. I know. But man, yeah, I think the more we talk about it, the more I kind of believe in the uh, the fact that it's like more psychically linked than actual remnants of like a deceased person like i mean i could see it being a little bit of both but it's like you said like your your influence and like what you're putting out there really brings and paints the kind of image that somebody's having yeah. of, of whatever they're dealing with oh yeah because it's like i don't know i feel like um you know my stepmom back in the day used to tell us how she lived in uh, pueblo colorado and how their house was like really haunted like wow she said that she like would have these like crazy dreams about like being chased by jesus on a crucifix and like before what? she even like knew what some of these words meant like she said that at the bottom of the crucifix it said he shall forsake you and then like and she didn't know what any of that meant and then like similar to the mirror the i mean the, the window thing she, they were all at like a she told me a bunch of these stories and there's like one time they were having a uh, like a cookout in the backyard and they all like everybody at the party saw somebody like slap the shit out of the window and just go hey and then everybody went up there and there's nobody in the house interesting uh, and she said i think the one that she told me that was like more scary one to me was that she was uh they had like a basement that was like converted into like a little like living air yeah. area yeah and so she was trying to like skip school one day so she went down there and was like watching tv and her sister who i guess like went to a different school so would go later went downstairs to go take a shower but so she like did the thing where you like pretend to be asleep and her sister walked by took the shower gets out of the shower walks out and then just like you know when you kind of close your eyes and you can see a little bit through your eyelashes she's doing that and sees her sister do this number <gasps> Oh my God. And then gets up and walks away. And then so, you know, that happens. And then she goes upstairs shortly after and sees her sister eating breakfast. And, you know, it was just like, hey, you're not gonna tell mom and dad I'm skipping. She goes, what are you talking about? And then they just find out that she never went downstairs. <gasps> so there's a doppelganger. Something, yeah. Something like that, yeah. So I always wondered, you know, it was like, I was also like, 11 when she was telling us this so i don't know how much of it was fabricated and you know just like scary stories but like you know same time that it i wonder how much of that is like i said like with the psychic stuff like because i know that like her family was like very christian and all this stuff so i yeah. know that like sometimes that christian guilt can like play a part and like it always does yeah. it's like oh it's demonic it's here it's that and um yeah, there's a story of a woman that lived in the Midwest. This psychic friend of mine told me this story. And uh, she bought this house. And she believed that this house had a demon in it. Because things would fly off the kitchen shelves. Now uh, plates were being thrown against the wall. Holy shit. After she did renovations. So something was stirred when she was redoing this house. So yeah. she gets in contact with my friend. And he doesn't need to be there physically. He's like... I just need you to put the phone on speaker and I need you to walk around the house. 
And so she puts on the speaker. She walks on around the house, has him on the phone. He's like, yeah, I'm getting a lot of energy right now. But then when he goes into the kitchen, he's like, I'm hearing a man. And he's so pissed at you because you painted the damn kitchen yellow. She's like, how do you know that? He's like, he's telling me. Damn. And she actually painted it yellow and everything. And she painted Holy it yellow. Shit. He's like, he hates it. And he's been trying to get your attention. He's, th- he's been throwing things. Yes, he's throwing forks and knives and plates. He wants you to paint it back to the original color because he hates the color yellow. And he wants you to put plants in the front yard. And he wants you to fix up his house because this is the owner that lived here. And he died here. So she does exactly what the psychic did, said to her. She puts new plants, new flowers in both the front and the backyard, paints the kitchen back to the original color, fixes up the house a lot, you know, makes it more, you know, presentable. And a month later, he calls her and he's like, how's it going? She's like, well, I have plates still. They're not broken. (laughs) um, He's like, yeah, he's like, put me on speaker, walk around the house. And he's like, yeah, it's pretty quiet. But the man says um, he really appreciates the flowers in the backyard the azaleas that you planted in the backyard. She's like, how would you know that? Like on Holy the phone, shit. not even on FaceTime. This was on speaker. Yeah. He's like, he's telling me, and he's like, keep up the good work and don't paint that kitchen yellow. And that was it. So those are things like we, when I say we truly don't know what we're dealing with, like we just are easily immediate to put a label on it. That ghost sounds like an asshole. Yeah, but that's why <laughs> whenever I go on an investigation, I like to walk through it by myself first. And then I bring a psychic and go based off of the psychics reading and see how it kind of parallels with my with my research and what i felt when i walked through yeah god i'd be so mad if a ghost just dictated how i got to decorate my house i know (laughs) fuck you you're not paying the mortgage on this bitch we are coexisting you just never know what we're getting our like what we're getting ourselves into we have to learn to coexist gotta buy a new home but then again, we are having a problem coexisting as the living. So. Do, you, do you really have to abide by that? Like, hey, I want my house to be this color. You really got to have it that color? You can't do what you want? <laughs> yeah. 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 Certain homes, you can't. Like, mm-hmm. certain districts, they will not let you do that. Like, where I want to live, like like Foothills. Yeah. No, but I'm talking about, like, the, the spirit. Oh, like the spirit. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, the, the, oh, like, the spirit didn't like the yellow paint in the like kitchen. It didn't like the yellow. How can we, how can we negotiate? Yeah. How, what if, can if we there can't be any negotiation. All right. Yeah. I, I actually have a plan tell me if you think this is a good idea the chicken died or what oh i turned it off for a second i'm getting cold in this thing that fan is right on my head <laughs> um yeah. i quit taking my steroids i was gonna say fucking yeah. god damn it no i was gonna say uh you could always just like kill yourself in that same house and then, and then get fuck into up it. the ghost yeah. yourself. <laughs> just be like hey Heard you was talking shit about yellow paint. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> you kill yourself, and then you like you haunt the house, and you're like, "Hey, move out, dude. It's my haunted house." I was about house. to say, yeah. Do you get to well, like yeah. evict that ghost? But then you become that ghost when new owners move in, and then they paint that yellow a different well, look, color. Look at the house that I was investigating in Mitchell. Like the family that was there that used to live there, they were telling me in my head, "Tell him to get these Ouija boards out because there's too many people here." So imagine being a ghost living in your house and these SOBs are coming in. They're YouTubers, no offense. And they're uh-huh. wanting to connect with the other side. And bam, they bring in a lot of negative shit into your space. You're How would you like that? You're just trying to hang out in your house on a Friday night. Yeah. These kids come over, these <laughs> Scooby-Doo motherfuckers, <laughs> and start calling everybody, using up all your minutes. Yes, Bunch of assholes. Exactly. Start a house party and shit. You believe the, so you do believe the Ouija board is a, a spiritual tool? It's a tool. I don't think it's demonic. And I'm going to get a lot of flack about this. When you think about the Ouija board, (coughs) you have to understand (coughs) that a lot of this demonic stuff came after the exorcist and that the Ouija board is a piece of capitalism in the paranormal world. (laughs) It really is. So the ghost is just like, get this shit out of here. Yeah, (laughs) It's like, oh, that's really cute. But it's funny because... I feel like we contradict ourselves when we're like, well, I'm scared of the Ouija board, but let me grab my phone and let me download the necro phone, the necrophone and ask the same questions that I would ask a Ouija board, but it's safe because it's on my phone. There is such a thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was, I'm not going to say who it was, but there's this YouTuber who did this story, how she played with the Ouija board and she refuses to play with it to this day. But then she downloads the app Necrophone on her phone and is asking the same questions that you would ask a freaking Ouija board. And I'm like in the comments, I'm like, how is this different than using a Ouija board or using a pendulum or using tarot cards? It's still a divination tool. I feel like the only thing going through Rock's mind right now is like, I'm downloading that app. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah. Those apps are really, really fun. And one of my friends, um, Amy Script, a really good one that I have an Oculus for is called Ghostseer. Ooh, okay. And yeah, we could actually use it right now if you want to, but I don't have the Oculus right now. But my friend Amy of Amy Script, she's from Australia. She's an investigator. She created Ghost Tube and Ghostseer, which is an app that you use with the Oculus. So she's using AI to incorporate that into her investigation. So the sensories or the sensors in your phone works with the AI, and the AI is picking up whatever's in the room and is going to pretty much portray an image of what is there i have an oculus at home yeah I can yeah work with that and what's this app it's called ghost tube and ghost seer i'm gonna i'm gonna try it here at the studio we're gonna see the old man yeah <laughs> maybe maybe you can see him let's do it i'm down but Dude, I, i'd be scared you. though like imagine this was like he he kurt cobain himself so this is what it's getting right now what the fuck is that <laughs> Let me see. You let me know. Dude, that looks like a guy in an office shirt with like a pig nose. Let me see. And like, a, that's kind of weird, dude. So I'm not 100% sold on this app. Like, oh, it's seeing what it's like, what's really here. But you, you don't know. I mean, we don't know what we're truly dealing with. And we don't know if this is 100% accurate, but it's a start. If that's what's going on here, I'm really scared of dying because that looks uncomfortable. Can you see? This looks like he's coming out of one of the, like the, the like Jumanji when he was stuck on the floor. <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna say it looks more to me like he's coming out of the thing that Porky Pig would like. But that's all, folks. At the end of <laughs> the Looney Tunes. Um, do you guys want to listen to any EVPs? Why not? Yeah, let's do that. You know what? Steptone has been he's been wanting to fucking do an EP EPV episode. Actually, this his work week is done. Maybe we can have him on next week. This week. That follows, he's gonna be busy. So the week after. Damn it! Yeah. Sucks when you what can't up, hang Steph out. What up, Steptoe? Same too. We can't hang out with your fucking rock star friends. You gotta come through, dog. He was here yesterday. Should have came through. I know, but I, I was busy. I yeah. 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 Oh, good. Okay, so this was um, taken in 2019. This was kind of like on the cusp of the pandemic. This was in uh, the um, Elks Lodge in Van Nuys. So the gentleman, uh, we were, we had two groups of people at this event. We were doing a paranormal investigation. I was in one room doing an EVP session, and this gentleman who's a volunteer of the Elks at this location was leading it. And he has rapport, first and foremost, he has rapport in the location, meaning he's always there, he's always cleaning, and he's the one that seems to have a lot of experiences with whatever was there. So this place was originally the Van Nuys Hospital way back in the day. And people have claimed that they've seen children on the second floor. They've seen a woman in a white dress and a white hat, which looks like a nurse from the 40s, roam on this floor. But it was also an Odd Fellows location. So if you know anything about the Odd Fellows, the Odd Fellows was a very unique organization of men. It was a fraternity of men. And when um, it is said that when you, you pass as an Odd Fellow, you can donate your body to the Odd Fellows. You could donate your remains. So a lot of times when you go to these locations, that were odd fellow locations, they would find skeletal skeletons, like actual skeletons that were the members of the odd fellows that they had kept in the locations. Odd fellows is like a secret society type of thing. Kind of like a society, yeah. It's a fraternity. They're not so secretive, but whatever um rituals they would do were pretty secretive. So um you're gonna hear what is known as a class A AVP. And this was his recording of what he picked up in this room right next to the theater on the second level. So here it is. Are you here? Yes. It gets crazier. Who are 
are you trying to contact? Did I love her? I am bad. Oh, I'm bad? Yeah, I am bad. You're, it said, he asked, are you here? It responded with yes. What do you want to say? Or, um, Who are you trying to contact? Yeah, you're moving the phone was the second one. And I am bad. Damn. Mm -hmm. And that's like where the kids are at? Yeah, these are, is this what the location of what people, like, he said that he's seen, like, what looks like the height of a child roaming around. I'm sure people are like, well, that's that's demonic. That's 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 an evil entity. You could hear it. Well, it's a lot of times the hypothesis is is when we're doing sessions like that and we get a raspy voice. A lot of times, what we believe is that the entity is trying to come up with some sort of verbal response, like they're struggling. So it sounds raspy. The gentleman doesn't fear for his life in this place. There's nothing evil there. They feel safe more than anything. The common occurrences is, um, here it goes, what we put into a place can come back and bite you in the ass. According to the owner, they had a gentleman that was drunk and, here we go, more drunks, um, being very disrespectful. And a, a glass ashtray flew up and like hit the wall, almost hitting the gentleman. And Damn. it was warning him, like, you're in my turf, be good or get the fuck out kind of thing. So whatever's there is very protective of the location, but at the same time, he feels like, I think they're all protecting us, like, because that is the sense that they're getting. They don't feel at all like it's an evil presence. Their lives are at stake. They're just coexisting with one another. How would you interpret the I am bad thing then? I am bad. It's a little boy. Oh. It's a little boy. He's seen a little boy. And that little boy could be precocious. He's like, I've been bad, you know. That's mm. me knocking down the broomstick. That's me running around the theater and you guys are coming up trying to figure out who's being bad. Mm. Sometimes when people get scratched at locations, um, they're like, I don't think it's demonic because I feel like it's a child entity and I feel like it's trying to get my attention. Like, God, I remember my niece and my nephew used to be so bad and they used to scratch me just to get my attention. They would scratch or pull my hair. Like, those are things that children can do as well. That's how E-Zone communicates, too. <laughs> <laughs> but a certain show put it out into the public that if it's a child entity, it's automatically demonic. That shit cracks me up because, like, I'm not Christian. I don't believe in any of that. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I believe that there's, like, evil energy and all that stuff. But it's, like, the concept of hell just seems like it was all put together just to scare people into conforming yeah of course yeah. like the 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 legend of the lechuza the legend of the the woman that's half owl half woman derived from the colonizers that came in the spaniards they created legends to um, control the first nations people that were here that had their own spiritualism if you don't baptize your child if you don't convert them to christianity the lechuza is going to come down take them and eat them as your punishment so you have to convert to Christianity. Damn, got rid of all the native. So every, now people are like, well, I believe in the Lechuza. I believe in this. I'm like, so. Do you believe in cryptids? Cryptids, yes. I believe that there, I, I think there are creatures out there that haven't been discovered, but also probably are, you know, dimensional beings. I was know? about to say, what's a cryptid specifically? A cryptid. Like an urban, urban myth. Yeah, oh, okay. Like, like Bigfoot is a cryptid. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A like every thing. state has a cryptid of their own. Yeah. It's like a state flower, a state bird, state I, in, cryptid. In an in a urban myth kind of way, yeah, because like, and like I don't know, it's weird. Like they, there's always something weird going on everywhere. What's the California cryptid? Like uh, Bigfoot? The Fresno uh, night walkers, the night crawlers, the Fresno night crawler and Bigfoot. There have been a lot of sightings in California, specifically Northern California, by Humboldt County, of sightings of Bigfoot. There's like there's at least ten in like California. Mm -hmm. Damn, they like have a grip. Ten but like, sightings or ten Bigfoot? No, like ten, ten Bigfoots. Cryptids. Like ten different type of cryptids <laughs> that like appear to or people. Sorry, Big Feet. What are the other ones? So I guess like so we'll go like 
So go from 10 to 1. So I guess for these are all, the, all I guess all over California. So and there are in Fresno as well. You're right, which you said. So number 10 is uh, in Lake Tahoe. They got a uh, Tahoe Tessie. So they believe there's some kind of some kind of Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster, monster out in Lake Nessie. Tahoe. Yeah. yeah. Mm, classy. Number nine is coming in as the Fresno Nightcrawlers. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And they actually look kind of weird, bro. That's like, they look like, damn, they look, they have like toothpick. There's supposedly a Vizio of, of, out there of someone capturing them. Yeah. It's like an alien, like, uh, what is it, a creature. And apparently they've been spotted in Yosemite National mm -hmm. Park. Number eight, Penelope in Sierra Nevada. And I guess this is like a, like a sighting of like some, like Corona kind of chick. She's eating something. I don't know, some like weird a, a tall human chick yeah uh, I've never heard of that one yeah number seven is uh lone pine mountain devil and lone pine and every time they call it something devil it's always like a big bat creature yeah yeah <laughs> jersey devil yeah. yeah number six the devil's pet and elizabeth lake so i guess another kind of loch ness monster <laughs> uh Number five, Borrego Sandman, another version of it. This is East San Diego, so this is another version of Bigfoot. Yeah. Four, Lake Elsinore, another, another, there's, damn, I got, there's something in Lake Elsinore, bro. And number three is the river, damn, there's one in Riverside, bro, a Riverside monster. <laughs> That's weird, man. What's the Riverside monster? Known as the Riverside monster, uh, by the Riverside Bridge monster and the brain. Tackler of Riverside. It was characterized by Wetzel. It's a tall standing on two legs, longest arm you ever seen, clawed off hands, and a body covered in leaf like scales. Yeah. Adding to the grotesque bottom of the river. That's kind of creepy. Number two, another Bigfoot called uh, Italy and Italy Beast and Italy Wild. <laughs> and number one, the Lizard People. Oh, that's a yes. That's true. That's another one. You believe in lizard people? No. You don't think that's like a real thing? No, because the gentleman that tried to discover the lizard lizard people kingdom never found them, and I think it led him to his death. I believe but there was a, a guy who tried to like find the lizard people kingdom. He believed that there's a kingdom in downtown Los Angeles, I believe, in the sewers. Fucking tight. And he actually like there is like, oh, there's a huge community. It's a city of them. And I believe he actually did like an expedition almost to, like he was trying to get to the core of the universe. Um, never made it. And I think he ended up dying. I believe. I, I think. But they were Damn. never found. But people have claimed that they've seen them in Nevada near a certain base which is also really interesting those are lot lizards not lizard people <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's been stories that come out of nevada and northern california that people have claimed to see lizard people people there too so who knows are they part of an experiment or are they extraterrestrial who knows how would you feel like how would you react how would you think you would react uh seeing like a cryptid as compared to seeing a ghost, because I feel like you're pretty comfortable seeing a ghost, but when you see a cryptid, that's a real thing. Ooh, what is the? But what are the odds? You know, if I were to see it, I would be processing like, what am I really fucking seeing here? Uh, yeah. I feel like I've seen something that scared the shit out of me once. Really? What did you yeah. see? Yeah. I Big feel chicken. like a crazy person, but it was a tarantula with big ass wings. Interesting. Yeah, this is back in Texas, and. We were at a friend's house on this like rooftop patio thing, like where the rooftop becomes a whole hangout. Nobody shot it. No, you're too young to have guns. This is like in high school, so like we didn't have. And also shooting a spider. Time to get a gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, yeah, nowadays. But nah, uh, yeah. So so I remember, <clears throat> I already don't like spiders, and there's like this, you know, like little hanging light or whatever by the door and all of a sudden you see a spider crawling down i was like oh it's a fucking tarantula and then i swear to god like we all saw it had wings and i've only seen like one picture on the internet that accurately what did the wings look like the wings looked kind of like uh like dragonfly wings except like really big like it looked like it could carry the tarantula body oh wow so how big was the body was it body was about like yay big or not not the like the whole the whole spider appeared to be about yay big because it's you know it's a tarantula so like the body's about that big yeah 
and then big ass legs. Damn, this is crazy. Are there tarantulas with wings? More importantly, no known species of spiders have developed flying wings. Flying tarantulas are a myth. For the record, tarantulas are a large group and often hairy spiders, and they, they you know, with fangs that could hurt humans, but they have never developed wings. Nah, dude, I guess that there's... So, this is actually the picture that I saw that kind of looks like exactly what I saw. Oh, my gosh. You see? Like, th that's exactly what the wings looked like and oh, wow. everything. Like, What is that? Like, what does uh, it say on that article? Or? It looks like it's a it's like a Snopes article or whatever, but it's just like, scientist discovers winged spider. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't I believe, believe that, but I also, that is like almost exact, like, Maybe it's a species that hasn't been discovered, but then in Iraq and Iran, in the mountains there, there are snakes that could fly as well. They have wings. What? Yeah, in the mountains. What the fuck? Yeah, you can Flying do this. snakes? There are flying snakes. I believe it's in Iran, like in the mountains there, or Iraq. What a stupid species. Develops wings before, like, grabbers or legs. And they're scary. They're scary. <laughs> but flying. they have these little wings, and that's and they travel through. they travel through the mountains. And um, that's where they're pretty much like where their dens are and everything, but that's where they are located. Oh, damn. They do have little wings. Yeah. It's it's creepy. Real that scares me more than anything. Yeah. I didn't think a snake would get scarier. Yeah. Which like one are you looking at? Because I can't tell if I'm looking at some fucked up bullshit. It's not like we're going to Iran anytime soon. Yeah. There you go. We're good. It's a real snake with wings in Iran. Is it this crazy white one with the angel wing looking shit? I think so. Mm -hmm. No. Stuff of nightmares right there. That is pretty fucking weird. Isn't that though. fucked up? Like imagine seeing that and not knowing like it was it's an actual creature, you know, it's been discovered. You just kill it. But then again, like, you know, Let we weren't introduced to gorillas until like what, late nineteenth century? Gorillas? Yeah. Like, I Damn. think the first gorilla to be placed in a zoo was in the 1900s. It was introduced to people, to the public for the first time here. Damn. I believe in the Bronx Zoo. So when people, you know, if people want to go to California and want to see a Bigfoot, like the chances of seeing Bigfoot is pretty low. Like your chances of winning the lottery could be pretty high. But I mean, oh, shit. yeah. It's, it's if you think about it, we still don't know where bears hibernate. We don't know where their generational dens are. I that's one thing that's always fucking bothered me. Like I'm like, yo, where, they sleep for months. Exactly. And, and where the where. fuck do they go? Exactly. Exactly. So where are these Bigfoots coming from? Do they travel with their generational group? Do they bury their dead? Do what do they do? You know, those are things that we still don't know about them. That's true. I mean, a, a Bigfoot is pretty fucking scary, though. Yeah. Like, you don't know what it is. Imagine the moment you get one, it just they just shave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I like, love that your first idea was to shave Bigfoot. I want to see what it looks like. Have you ever seen like a shaved bear? What if it's the missing fucking link, though? Like, what if under that he just looks like a Neanderthal like that didn't evolve? True. Like he's just like he he's like Encino man. That's what I always wonder too. But then you have the native, the First Nations people too that have a weird like kinetic energy or psychic energy to them. Like they could almost read their minds in a way. Do you believe in like psychics and stuff like that? I believe in some psychics. I've learned um, ways to cop out a, a fake one. Like, I've seen some pretty bad ones. I've been in a room where they've done cold readings, and it's it's obvious that this is a scam. But um, the three, my three red flags of trying to, you know, call out a psychic, if they're real or not, um, if they don't have a sense of humor. That's the thing that I notice. If they do not have a sense of humor, it's already a red flag for me. If they make the investigation or everything about themselves, that's another red flag. And lastly, if they're charging you like thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars for their services, another red flag. Let me ask you this one, because this one I was pretty skeptical on. Uh, my wife and her friend used to do like a little like like spooky podcast um, back in the day mm -hmm. called Spookyish, and uh, they went. I forget how they found out about this, but they found somebody that was a pet psychic. Oh, yeah. There are some that are like that. Yeah. I just feel like this. 
like that's something that I'm going to be skeptical on because it's like I get like 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 we said like the energies like what you bring there can be remnants like there's all sorts of things that can transpire that we just don't have the answers to mm -hmm. but I think the thing that was getting to me was it was just like there's all these people like hurting and obviously like really desperate for some sort of just yeah. glimmer of uh closure and hope and uh this lady, you know, she checked your boxes. She had a sense of humor. It wasn't all about her. So she was good at her, you know, what she did. And I, you know, I went in there and I tried to have an open mind. But the whole time, I'm just like, every single thing is like. Was she asking a lot of questions? She'd ask a lot of questions. Already a bad sign. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of asking questions and stuff like that. And everything just ended the same. Like, oh, Moopsie is just wants you to be happy and wants you to move on. Mm, yeah. Fucking Fluffy just fluffy's in a great place now and i'm like is there fucking like bunny heaven like i don't know there's just i'm i am a skeptic when it comes to the definitive like stuff like that like i think i can get behind like the energy and like remnants of things that other people have left behind so it's got that imprint and and stuff and well there are people who are animal communicators like they just have away with animals they could really sense them and yeah. communicate with them in certain ways um but i believe that there are, are a lot of fakes out there regardless if they communicate with pets or humans and um we're going through this is what i was thinking about the other day we're going through a renaissance right now with spiritualism people are waking up yeah and it's it, it's re it's repetitive of the history that it in the birth of spiritualism when the spiritualism movement came about when was it in the early 19th century with the fox sisters and then you had the psychical research society uh the Psy psychical society research coming out and trying to call them out because there were a lot of fakes out there that were taking advantage of people who lost loved ones due to the yeah. civil war you had to be wealthy to have a seance you had to be um, a person with a good standing and a lot of money and a lot of friends to host one. And you don't know who you were getting at the time. Yeah, it was it was a thing, you know, that was something that was a party, you know, they would they didn't have Ouija boards half the time. They would sit in a table in a circle with candles and do the knock once for yes, twice for no. And you don't know, like the Fox sisters who if they were cracking the toes of their feet to manipulate mm. that sound, which they were called out for. And um, we're seeing that now in this renaissance. Your um, Tanya has even called them out too on TikTok, but you have the TikTok psychics. Oh, what? dude. Yeah. No, that shit. There's, yeah. All right, talk to me ta about that. Ta ta Tanya yeah. be calling them out like crazy. Yeah, there's some tells goofy about that. ass there's some bullshit TikTok, psychics. TikTok psychics that they have gotten called out. I've called them out too. And these are people that go on lives they want you to dump money into their paypal or whatever their cash app give me a they, bunch of hearts and and yeah give me a bunch of hearts and they have the what is it the it's like this magnet thing and there it has a yes and a no like a pendulum and oh. they're like oh cindy from north carolina yes cindy is your grandmother here oh it's going to yes okay and and joey from california your dog fifi's here yes and it, it, it's it's people don't seek out help they seek out the services of a psychic inside right. somebody were to fuck around and try to do that if they would be like yeah your dog's here i'll be like throw some food on the floor that shit is not gone <laughs> you know how like <laughs> exactly. yeah that's and not my dog what's worse is the ethics that come into play so recently i think it was a year ago a big thing happened these tiktok psychics were called out by the new york times daily mail people because now they're claiming they're making communication with the um poor girl that was killed gabby petito oh no and, oh just stay in a lane don't yes, oh. and they were severely called out i even call them now too in my tiktok because one of them i know kind of personally and i can already <laughs> tell you that she has abilities but she really showcased like she up stages them embellishes it and she would go on tiktok and say oh i'm i'm tasting dirt and she's, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm this and I'm that. And I'm like, you, you doing this causes the family to relive their trauma every second. Yeah. And there are psychics that do work with professionals, but they're very much low key. They are. It's very private, and they're vetted. <coughs> But these psychics on TikTok, they're they're just a mess. They're they're creating. They're doing more harm than good. It's one of those, it's like, uh, my mom is very Christian mm -hmm. and I think she needs that 
So I respect that. So I respect some people. Like my sister did like, it's like a really weird animal psychic thing. But it, You don't believe in God at all? I believe there's something. Like you believe in, in, a, in a creator or something? I don't know if I believe in a singular creator. I think I just believe I don't know anything. I think it's like a conglomerate. <laughs> it's one of those I think like without getting too much into it uh, no, I'm not saying it like being judgmental no I just, like, no no I, yeah. I'm, oh I'm offended yeah. you yeah. think I don't believe in anything fuck I'm you I'm like bro you're talking to the guy who like I'm like I believe these chickens you know <laughs> they, yeah. they, they are sacrifices for a higher being so so for me I guess it's that I uh, I don't know but I know I was raised Christian and so whenever I finally like you know you do your internet research and you see where every facet of you know christianity was like pulled from different religions or like where like you know hell came from and all this stuff and you kind of just see all that homework kind of makes you a little bit uh like i used to be like super atheist to be like nope there's nothing you just die and then you know shit happens in life and you kind of can't explain everything and uh so now I've kind of just like for for a while now I've kind of taken the approach of uh, I don't really know what to believe, but I'm not like closed off. Mm -hmm. So I but I mean I also am skeptical when it comes to certain things like you know mostly organized religion, but it's like Santeria and stuff like that seems like it's a old practice with a lot of like a lot behind it that doesn't seem influenced from greedy white people. Well, Greedy white people would change their religion up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like they believe me, dog. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I didn't doubt they voodoo. weren't trying. Yeah. Voodoo too. I mean, I go to New Orleans and I it's like it's the people that I see practicing it, and I say that with strong finger quotes are predominantly white. Yeah. And I go to the I i I know a lot of the real practitioners there and um and they're like, Well, there's several types of voodoo in New Orleans, you know. You see the ones that are actual, the actual people that talk to their ancestors. That, ha that <laughs> yeah. Haitian voodoo would be scary as exactly. fuck, bro. Exactly. Thank you. I don't be fucking well, with that Haitian there. voodoo, bro. Like that that's shit is. That's what they have there. That yeah. shit is some other level. Like I'm like, hey, bro, like <laughs> treat the animals nicer, eh? Like what the fuck, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like fool, we gotta sacrifice it as it is. So like, don't be handling the birds like that, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I've, yeah. I've, like I've been to a casa there, like, cause it's different. Like when you go to like, you know, when it's like. Casa with people that are traditionally Africanos, and then you go get red, like not go get red, but you see, you're like, well, this is a whole different get down. It's a little bit more intense. Yeah. Like I, I'm, it's I'm a lot different than when you go to the quarter and you see Debbie from Detroit, who is 24, practices voodoo now, and is making a gri gri bag, you know, and it, it's it's a lot different. Yeah. So I didn't want to sacrifice a chicken, so I went <laughs> and I picked up some cauliflower chicken wings. Or yeah, like yeah. like circle. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, man. There's some people that will try to tweak it like that. Now, do you, um, damn. I, I was gonna say, I kind of lost my train of thought on this. Yeah. Well, now I, I know I, we need to start the vegan voodoo. Vegan voodoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. Be like, well, we don't believe in sacrificing animals here, so what we sacrifice is like, you know, I bet there's gonna be somebody out there. It's go gonna ahead. fuck the whole religion up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, man, cauliflower wings. It's that, gonna happen. Like, yeah, the, most likely. We molded the, we molded this jackfruit into the shape of a chicken, and now we're gonna cut its head off. But it's no animals are being harmed. But that, yeah, like you were you were saying before, I can't remember the the person who made this quote, but um, belief can be the enemy, and if you believe in something a little too hard, it's it can definitely keep you tunnel vision and need it in a deeper and darker hole that you can't submerge yourself from. Yeah. So when people ask me, what do you believe in? Do you believe in ghosts? I'm like, I want to, I just want to, and, and I do, but I just want to know what they are. Yeah. And I just want to know like what else is out there. I'm open to a lot of things, you know, and I was brought up Catholic too. So yeah, you get it. Yeah. I get it. I 100, <laughs> I'm not a practicing Catholic anymore, even though I like to pray to certain saints, but, um, but yeah, I just, try to be a little more open. Like I was open to Taoism. I was open to Buddhism. I was open to a lot of other things. You can definitely get a lot of things from all these different religions. Exactly. My favorite is uh, I have a friend in Austin named Bob Peck, and he's very big on Taoism, I believe, or at least Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because he gets all this flack online from people that are just hardcore Christians. And he's like, no, I believe Jesus exists. And I think he was a really good person. I just don't think that he was actually the messiah yeah. yeah but like no like there's evidence that he existed and 
the way he lived is like the ideal like Buddhist way to live, which is just being very like good to everybody, removing the ego from everything. Exactly. So exactly. To get really weird, <laughs> do you ever think about the fact that we're such a small speck of dust in the universe? Because I was, I was telling, you know, we, we, me and my wife talk about like reincarnation and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, so if reincarnation exists, what keeps you tethered to this world? What's to say that your energy can't be dispersed and you can't up, appear in a completely different galaxy? What's saying that your energy can't make that journey? Like, mm -hmm. just getting weird about it. And so it's like, same thing with like, you know ghost and and all this stuff that we just don't understand i love those types of discussions too because I, I it's really easy to think about the micro but i always like to take a, a second to look at the macro because it's like that's a good way to look at it yeah we are so small we are very very we're we're just we're just stardust you know that's all it is in this universe and we are if you think about it like ask yourself what happens to ourselves what what happens to us when we die that shit scares me, bro. Like, and it just, shouldn't. It's death. Like, that shit just fucking scares me. And that's me. our problem with the paranormal. I think people need to learn more about death and the, psycho the psychology of fear, especially when it comes to death. And my belief is when we pass, we go into infinity. And that's what I and want. Beyond. And beyond. <laughs> yeah, I think we go into infinity. <laughs> and we are just specks in the icky black darkness of this universe. I feel like oh. you lose your consciousness, like you lose your ego. No, I well, think, yeah, I feel like there's a persistence of consciousness that constantly persists after we leave our mortal, our mortal coil. What do you think encompasses? You think we see homies or like we forget about it? Because that's what I was going to say is I wonder like to what degree do your memories travel with you? Yeah. Like how, how it, it, it's like, uh, it's like having a really weird dream and just everything makes sense, yeah. even though it's like really fucking bonkers. And that's what I've heard from several psychics. I hear different takes. People that tell me, no, I know what happens. I'm like, you're still living. No, you have don't. You, have <laughs> you talked to somebody that has had a near death experience? Yes. There's a, there's a term. Come back? Yes. Hey. NDEs. NDEs. Um, so the best one is from my friend Johnny L. Tenney, who died. He had a heart attack at a very young age. He was 18 and he had a heart Holy attack. Holy shit. Fuck was that. Was he fat or what? Like No, he just had a heart attack. Some, sometimes people have heart conditions. <sighs> he died on the table for two minutes. And he said that we're, like what he saw was his body, but it was just black. At the time. He like he was black? No, like it was just dark. It this was just fool. black. It was like he was like in a black hole. And then looking back at what he experienced, because now he became more sensitive to a lot of spiritual beings, he was like, you know, I really wasn't raised to be Catholic or Christian. I didn't have a belief system, to which is why I saw darkness. But I think when I talk to people who are NDEs, who are near death, uh, who have had near death experiences, the ones that are Christian, the ones that are Catholic, Buddhist, they're experiences are a little more different they see the light at the end of the tunnel or they see a saint or an angel or they're just in this green field and it's very interesting to learn about those accounts i'd be mad if like i'm in a field and i have to work <laughs> like, <laughs> like i wake up in a field and i'm like i'm outside no like yeah. and then you're like there's fucking fruits and a shit. lot of like, times yeah they're just floating above their body i mean it's a, a lot of different accounts my you dad know, said steph, that he saw his body when he died and yes. had a heart attack our friend <laughs> steph tone oh he, he um he has had a near-death experience and he got ran over by a car where, oh my god like where like he said him he said this a couple times he's he says he saw his body on the floor being picked up and everything, and he just was, like, floating up and just, like, he, like, saw his body, like, oh, shit, I got ran over. I'm yeah. dead kind of shit. And then he went back into it when the, 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 the paramedics kind of picked him up and shit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've heard a lot of those accounts, too. So there's different accounts. Like, people see light or they see their bodies. So if you see your body nine times out of ten, there's a chance you could come back. Mm -hmm. You might be, I mean, I don't know. Like, if you're good, like thank god but i'm saying like there's a chance he could be a little retarded What's it, yeah bro because I'm, I'm talking about like if it's if it's if you not have brain enough, damage yeah if it's not enough to kill you bro like you're gonna end up a little retarded bro like what is it uh because you came close i got hit by a car in eighth grade and i remember uh like i didn't die i didn't like i wasn't pronounced dead at any point but i do remember like having an out of body experience and seeing it replay so I saw myself go out in the street. Oh wow! And I saw myself get hit by a car, and then you know I came to. 
Like a movie. Wow. It was super weird. It was like so you had like deja video, vu yeah. before, like or after. Huh? You had like a deja vu kind of. Yeah, I guess like right after, and I guess my brain for whatever reason was just like, here's what it looked like from up top. <laughs> you got That's the so interesting. You got the replay cam going. Yeah. <laughs> it's the replay. Boom. Fucking pause. I got fucking Steve Madden. Fucking and if you're luck right here, this is where it went wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that or it's just you just you finally hear God's voice and he's just laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's kind of, you know, nobody ever wants to have one of those. But I, I do like having the, having that input from those people or hearing those kind of stories from people that have had near death experiences because I'm like it. We it is it is scary. Yeah, it's like, very scary. It it is it is terrifying. Like at least to me, because like you're, you think you're, you know, I don't know. Like death comes around and then you think subconsciously, especially because we live in like such a fast paced world and everything's like. You want instantly. You want dopamine very instantly. Like you forget that not everybody makes it to get be old. Yeah. Like you grow up and you think you're like, oh, me, all my homies are gonna be all like hella old. It's like, no, we might not all make it to like. Well, that's why we fear death because we don't have a control. We don't have control over it. We can't control it. It's inevitable. Like we can walk out right now and get hit by a car or something, and that's it. And I think that's what why we fear death the most is because we just honestly do not have control over that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's the, that's the thought of death is definitely scary. But I see that's what scares us. And I feel like, I don't know, I've been reading more about it and researching it a lot more. And now I'm not so scared of it. Especially with the way that this world is turning. I'm like, I'm, fine. I'm ready <laughs> to peace out. Be here. I am ready. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know what? It wouldn't be a bad time to check out. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i think the thing that's kind of helped me out with you know thinking about death because i think everybody's brain constantly goes there you know at least mine goes at least once a day it's like hey you could die and yeah. i think the thing that i kind of remind myself with the fear of it is that uh it's also just like programmed you're programmed to consume reproduce and survive so mm -hmm. obviously you know it's like animals don't necessarily always have a my cat concept. is the happiest creature ever bro like it's just like he, he does not live for nothing i wish i could live like that it's fucking same but but uh, you know my, my thing is like a wild animal doesn't understand what death is like <clears throat> i'm sure that you know as like an animal's killing something to eat it it's not thinking about the fact that that animal had a life and whatever it's just it's just eating some animals do though bro like you know some animals understand the concept of death like crows hold the funeral for their that's for, right for the, crows do that like crows hold hold the funeral for the loved ones bro like i did not know that yeah, yeah like it's are... crazy like if it like because they, they travel in flocks that's good. wow so like it's like a gang and like if one of them like dies or they just like they all gather around in a circle and they fucking sing they mourn it, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, but, I mean, they are very intelligent creatures. They also hold yeah. grudges. Yeah, they do. If, you, if you're really mean do. to a crow, this motherfucker's going to remember. Like, if they you see, will remember, yeah. 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 That's why I'm always nice to them, like, especially when I go hiking. Like, I see them, and I'll just, like, I'll have some trail mix, and I'll just be like, here you go, dude. So, like, they, and then they'll, 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 like, come out and eat it, and, like, they just, it's, it's funny because they, they walk like South Park people. They, like, yeah, hop. They're like, <laughs> yeah, they, like, fucking walk yeah. all the <laughs> way. They're, 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 yeah. they're, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty they, smart. They remember a face. I don't know. There's, a, there, there's something, like... There's a mysticism they add to them, but it's like, that's just some Hollywood shit, bro. They're just blackbirds. So a lot of people just because yeah, of... But they're also and, really smart. And ravens, too. Yeah. The ravens, yeah. yeah. Edgar Allan Poe and the raven, and yeah. Like, some of these... Of a, a lot of these things were not scary until Hollywood got their hands on them. Exactly. Voodoo being one of them, of course, and... The human Adrian anatomy and, itself, like the skull. Like, we all have one of those. Yeah. Yeah, like, we all look like that under. And then, like, what it's like, you know, Hollywood's kind of associated that as, like... Oh, it's like a it's a sign of horror. Like, look at the emoji. Like when you type in dead, like it looks a little bit intimidating. Like they use yeah. that, like you know, like it's it's crazy. But I'm like, we all have that shit. It's just, I guess it's, everything's been kind of like um, romanticized yes. in a sense. You can get desensitized if you just keep a skull in your bedroom, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel. Or you I feel work in the industry. I feel yeah. that. Yeah. I, yeah. Straight up, you'll see one if you're in the Santa Rio world. <laughs> like you'll, you'll you'll run you into see a one. lot of them. Yeah. yeah. That's one of those. I'm sure the first time you're like, "Oh shit, that belonged to somebody." That wasn't the first time that I would that I've seen one before, though. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had seen one before, like at a hospital. Like, I don't think I've seen like human remains, like a skeleton. But yeah, like you know, 
dead people. Yeah. Yeah. The you know we're talking about cremation on the documentary, so that shit is scary, bro. Why? I, I want to get cremated. I just don't. I, just let the let, let the worms eat me, dude. They're not gonna uh, let that happen, though. The way they the flames and the aggression of the flames. Yeah, yeah. like me están quemando. Fuck that. Put me in yeah. the wall, then. Or well, something. they have um aquamations now. Have you heard of being aquamated? You get put in a pool of piranhas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my dog passed a couple months ago, and um, to hear that. they thank you. And the hospital is really great. And I was like, I don't know if I want her to be cremated. It sounds so aggressive. They're like, No, we sent her up to a place where she'll be aquamated. I'm like, What the hell is that? You dump her in the ocean? Like, what is that? And it, what it, they do when they do this for humans, they put them in a bath with lye and salt and water. And it takes a couple, I think, two weeks for the body to just dissolve into this liquid. And then it's just the bones that submerge, and then they compound the bones, and then that's it. Hmm. Yeah. Because I was gonna say a reason I want to be cremated is uh, I've I've only had one family member get cremated, and that was three years ago, and that was honestly it it felt a little more less painful. It, the closure was there, <clears throat> and it's like uh, it's like okay, so like my dad died in two thousand nine. I never went to his his gravesite after that. Uh, a lot of mixed feelings, a lot of just things, but like I can't. And now, like I live across the country, so I can't just like yeah, on a whim going, go. Yeah. Um, but it's like expensive on top of that, and like the way they bury you, like you're not giving back to the planet. You're in a a wood box, and <clears throat> I forget, but I don't think that you're like accessible to like worms and stuff. You're not contributing to the world. You're just hoarding your fucking decomposing You're still being body. selfish? Exactly. Yeah. So to me, like, so being <laughs> being uh, cremated is a, like kind of like a way to set your family up for not having to do a whole lot. Of, right. You know what I'm saying? Is that, we gotta go out in style. Like, we gotta be like, be like, cremate me and then make me into penance. That way everybody takes a piece. Oh, See, yeah. that'd be tight as yeah, shit. I'd be like, yo, I'm heady, bitch. You know? I would do that. I'd be like, yo, I'd put me like, in a ring or something. <laughs> glass blowers can do that it's crazy when you put ashes in glass i've seen it several times bro and it's different for every person like and i know the best the best one i've seen is like i think logan has one of his dad <clears throat> and he had a really good relationship with that he loved his dad a lot and you, the way that ash kind of came in like you kind of see like the gold and the light that came in there so the ash always is different every time yeah. so i'm like that's i'm like hey dude that's like your dad it's gonna be your light dude that's you know what happens to that? Like when you pass, like what happens to those things? Like what do you mean? Like if you're gonna be put into a ring, are you gonna be buried with that? Or are you gonna allow someone to inherit it? Or oh, I would want somebody to inherit it. I'd probably yeah. give it to my kid if I ever have one. Straight up, I wonder if they could chop my hand off and like <laughs> make it into like a keychain. <laughs> like take me with you everywhere. Like a rabbit's foot. Yeah, yeah I'd do of... that. Put me in a mausoleum. I'm like, just put me in a mausoleum with my my dog and my favorite things, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah, no, but I think I, I I've thought a lot about it, and I was like, yeah, I think I'd just rather be cremated. I think it's just easier on everybody. And after having to bury my dad, and then having my you know wife's stepdad get cremated, I was like, honestly, the the cremation was a, a lot cleaner and it faster was, too. And it was just like I, I, you're close to it. The whole time, yeah. Or like she got to keep it. Uh, she got uh her own individual thing. Like everybody gets a little bit of sand. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. What, dude? It looks like sand. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it. But but you know that that's that's my that's my thoughts. Is that, to me it it, it is closer because yeah, yeah, like I said, when you put somebody in the ground, you gotta physically go there to see them. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta do all those things, but in this yeah, time, it's like <clears throat> literally in the house. Every time I go yeah. see my aunt, it's, it's a little tough. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So, <clears throat> honestly, I want to thank you, Tammy, for coming by. Thank like, you for yeah, me. this is a lot of fun. This is great. I, I feel like, like we got to like know so much, and like we didn't even like. I don't know. I, I feel like we could have done. We could have just gone, kept going and going and going, just because. Yeah. Of course. I cannot believe it's been two hours. No. Uh, <laughs> can we do an episode of XG though? I would love to see how he interprets all of this. No, he would just ruin it. No, I, I mean, yeah, but I think it'd make it good. Like it'd be fun. <clears throat> he, he, I have a friend who like Tanya likes him too. Like he's, you know, just because of how like I'm like, bro, you something's you're gonna go through a change because in life where you're gonna be like all this shit. 
becomes reality. I feel like we all go through that as humans. Yes. Like where you're like, oh, this thing that what is God or religion or like, I, I you, you're gonna come to a point where you figure out you need some help. Are you talking about XG still? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't see him as a religious person. Not that he needs to be or anything like that, but I just like, I just feel like I'm like, <clears throat> every there's something out there that makes you believe or makes you think twice. Yes. At some point in your life, it happens, and I don't think it has happened in my friend, but you know, at some point it's His gonna. His parents happen. got divorced. I don't think that affected him as much. I mean, maybe if he I was mean, like, I'm just saying. he was like five, maybe. But shout out to you, XG, for uh, not being here today. I miss uh, you and uh, and doing the show. I didn't say I didn't miss him. I yeah. know, <laughs> but I'm just, you know, yeah. But uh, where can they follow you at? Um, everyone can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Hollywood Paranormal. I'm on TikTok at Haunted LA Girl. And um, I was in the last season of Ghost Adventures, so you could see one of my interviews with the um, Heritage Museum. And I'll also be on another episode of Ghost Girls on Tubi. The Her Heritage is um, the one right here by the zoo? Yes, I think it's close to the zoo. It was, it's like kind of close, it's between like, I think by Pasadena or Glendale. Yeah. Yeah, it's that little area of all those houses that have been collected all over California, the Queen Anne Victorians. Yeah. And they've just been placed there, and I've had paranormal experiences there. Wow. And to which is why I ended up on Ghost Adventures. They were investigating that location, and I was like, yeah, I had to stay in this location for two weeks, and weird things happened. Wow. That's Where can they follow? Where can they see your content at, though? Like, <clears throat> um, You can see all my content on TikTok, uh, which is at uh, Haunted Ellie Girl or Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. At Hollywood Paranormal. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys follow her. I mean, you, you guys want original content for the spooky season to watch? We've definitely given you quite a bit to do this October. I mean, you could take a holly, uh, the, the haunted tour, the homie that we had last time. Mm -hmm. You could watch <clears throat> some of Tammy's content. Get your face painted by Honcholo. We've been giving it to you guys all sp uh, October long. So all summer. Yeah, straight up. Ray, shout outs. And it doesn't stop. Shout out to Tammy for coming through. Please come again. Yeah, Thank please. You. Always welcome here. Follow me on IG, YouTube, Morning Shot Films. Check out my website, morningshotfilms.co. I got new High and Hungry shirts with the Splatter logo on it. Don't want to miss out on that limited supply. Also, check out my Morning Reel podcast where I review films. I just recently put out The Shining, Stanley Kubrick classic, and House of so have you seen House yet? No, I'm probably going to watch it this weekend. Did you see the other one? Which one? Donnie Darko? Yeah, that was kind of weird. Donnie Darko? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, movie is... It is really fucking weird. Yeah. Everybody obsessed over that. Jake Gyllenhaal, though. God. Oh, my God, and he travels time, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it really doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, shout out, Rock. Shout out to me in my kick-ass chicken suit. Mm -hmm. Follow me on all my socials at R-O-C-K-S-A-M-S-O-N-A-T-X. Follow my group, The Beautiful Men's Club, uh, just like it sounds on Instagram. And stay tuned for the uh, beat set. I'm going to do it in the chicken suit. Um, I'm, I forgot my headphones, so if I'm off time, fuck you. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in once again. Uh, make sure you guys share the clips that we make. It helps us get a lot more people on the Patreon. You know what I mean? Patreon, you guys get it first. We try to do a lot of stuff. Also, subscribe to my uh, YouTube page, my other YouTube page, where I do the IRL vlogs. <clears throat> I would have had a dope one yesterday, but a special fuck you to Universal Studios for blacking out the date for, uh, you know, I get the most expensive platinum pass. It's supposed to come with a free horror night ticket. But they black out the most popping dates. I'm going to attempt to go again tomorrow or Monday. But I wanted to go for free, you know? Because it's like, it's, I'm like, hey, bro, you paid for the pass. What the fuck? Like, I'm not about to pay 260 on top of that, bro. It ain't worth it. Fuck but, uh, no. Yeah. You know, for the free free. But yeah. Shout out to Chef John for always hooking it up. We, we had some drinks at Buca de Pepo. Oh, shit. That sounds tight. Yeah, it was pretty chill. Yeah, it was pretty. I, I never been there. Actually, it took me back. I actually got an original uh, movie poster from uh, Animal House. I posted Damn. it yesterday wow. with, uh, what is it? I'm like, with, it's like the original film fucking paper, dog, and it's framed already. I was like, damn. I was like, I was, I'll show it to you. It's in the car. Um, also, I'll see some of you guys at the playoffs. Let's go LAFC. We're going to definitely make it uh, make it a good one. You know what I mean? It's we, They're playing Vancouver. So uh, Vancouver, best, out of, best out of three. Uh, we, I'll be there. <laughs> there will be not be a Halloween party, so I probably will see you guys at the uh, Cypress Hill show maybe later if I don't go watch a movie. But 
Cypress Hills tonight. Yeah, at the at the Novo, I think. Or, oh. Yeah, so yeah, at the Novo. So I'll probably be there later on, enjoying myself. With that being said, we'll see you guys on Wednesday morning for the Wake and Bake. Stay tuned for the closeout. <laughs>
everybody starts trying to, you know, use the funky kind of records, and then you start thinking that you gotta start buying all this wild European shit. And I think I'm past that phase now. Don't come out the house cause the gang outside Bang outside, I hang outside Don't come out the house cause the gang outside
Let's take them back. Uh huh. Coming up, I was confused. My mama kissing the girl. Confusion occurs coming up in the cold world. Daddy ain't around, probably I'll commit felonies. My favorite rapper used to sing, check, check out my melody. I wanna live through it, so shit, I sell dope for a four finger ring. One of them go roast, and it told me if I fans to get a sheepskin coat. If I can move a few packs, I get the hat. Now that'd be dope, toss and turn in my sleep that night. Woke up the next morning, niggas have stole my bike. Different day, same shit, ain't nothing good in the hood. I run away from this bitch and never come back if I could. Either the love the underdogs on top, and I'm gon' shine, homie, until my heart stop. Go ahead. I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, 
Got royalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece, got war and peace inside my DNA. I got power, poison, pain, and joy inside my DNA. I got hustle, though, ambition flow inside my DNA. I was born like this, it's born like this. See, Mac, you lit conception. I transform like this, perform like this. What shouts you a new weapon? I don't contemplate, I meditate. They're off your fucking head. This that put the kids to bed. This that I got, I got, I got, I got. Realness, I just feel shit, cause this in my DNA. I got millions, I got riches building in my DNA. I got dark, I got evil that rot inside my DNA. I got off, I got trouble, some heart inside my DNA. I just win again, then win again, like Rainbow, then I serve. Yeah, that's him again, the sound that engine in is like a bird. You see fireworks and covet tires, skirt the boulevard. I know how you work, I know just who you are. See, use a, use a, use a. You almost probably switch inside your DNA Follow this, all that sucker shit inside your DNA Daddy probably snitch, heritage inside your DNA Backbone don't exist, born on side a jellyfish I gauge See my pedigree most definitely don't tolerate the front Shit I been through probably offend you, this is Paula's oldest son I know murder, conviction, burners, boosters, burglars, ballers, dead Redemption, scholars, fathers, dead with kids and I wish I was fed Forgiveness, yeah, 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 soldier's DNA Born inside the beast, my expertise checked out in second grade When I was nine, on sale motel, we didn't have nowhere to stay At 29, I've done so well, hit cartwheel in my estate And I'm gon' shine, like I'm supposed to, anti-social extrovert And excellent, mean an extrovert And I'm sitting this, what the fuck you heard And plus the list that struck my nerve And that's a rift on a penis case The reason my power's here, salute the truth from the prophecy I, I got...